o'clock news starts right now. All right, take a look at this. Seeing some showers, some seeing dark clouds moving their way. We've been watching, waiting, hoping for some rain. And after a string of 100 plus degree days, it looks like a huge swath of our viewing area is finally going to get some. Let's check in with Adam Kasky. Yeah, we finally have some activity on the radar screen. It sure is nice to see. It's good to see it filling in and a good portion of San Antonio right now and especially Northern Bear County. Here's the big picture, the wider view of the action. Those little white lines, those indicate the lightning strikes where it's especially lit up is near Brackettville. That's where we actually have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for this time. And that is Kinney County uh, stretching into Zavala County and southwestern Uvalde County, North Northern Maverick County included that severe thunderstorm warning is until 645 PM. Primary threat here is wind gusts up to about 60 miles per hour, maybe some hail about three quarters of an inch in diameter. But for the most part, the wind is the primary threat with that. You get into San Antonio, especially the northwest side of Bear County, basically 410 up I 10 all the way into the Bernie area. This is stretching soon into the Stone Oak area as well. You get a little closer here and you look around 1604, 410 Leon Valley, Bandera Road 16 and Calabria Tower Road, Braun Road. You get the heaviest downpours and even up into Chavano Park at this time. Just move from the medical center towards Chavano Park and almost in Castle Hills now, momentarily in Castle Hills, some of the heaviest rainfall near Lackland, actually over Lackland, some downpours and approaching Windcrest, some heavy rainfall. Now, the outflow boundary is actually kickstarting these showers and it's about the rain starts about 25 minutes after the outflow boundary hits. So you'll feel the temperature drop and then Hopefully you'll get the showers to sprout up within about 25 uh, minutes. So it's approaching Elmendorf right now. Full update coming up. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Adam. It was the first epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak here in San Antonio, the Southeast Nursing Home and Rehabilitation Center, where nearly 100 residents and employees ended up infected. That prompted the promise of a state investigation. And today, the Texas Health and Human Services Commission released the findings from that report. Devin Clark joins us live after taking a look at that report. Devin, the findings are certainly not pretty. Steve Myra, no, they are not. In fact, the report itself more than 450 pages long. This is just a small portion of it, but the lengthy document is because ins inspectors say that they found a lot of problems inside of this chronically troubled facility. The state found the home deficient in not one, but 10 important ways, including quality of care, resident rights, and others. But the one that kept coming up, infection control, saying the facility failed to maintain infection prevention and control and the transmission of disease for 66 of the home's 84 residents. Part of the problem cited the failure to separate residents identified as COVID-19 positive from those that weren't and allowing staff members who had been exposed to the virus to continue working. Other findings included residents not having their bed sheets changed or getting a bath for five days. Administrators at Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation have already filed a correction plan with the Texas Department of Health and Human Services, but they still face a lawsuit filed by residents relatives for its handling of the outbreak. And we tried contacting the facility here to see if officials corrected any of the issues that they were supposed to. When we called earlier today, a representative hung up on us. Reporting on the southeast side for the defenders, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Devin. New at six, a poteed man charged with murder accused of strangling a woman this past weekend in Atascosa County. 48-year-old Marcelino Eli Esparza was arrested in Kerr County yesterday. According to the Atascosa County Sheriff, 48-year-old Margie Agujo was found dead in a home just outside of Poteet. A couple of days later, investigators tracked down Esparza and arrested him. With some help from the Kerr County deputies, Kerrville police and state troopers, he was taken to the Kerr County Jail, but was expected to be transferred to Jordanton sometime today. Investigators did not say how the suspect and the victim knew each other, nor did they give any possible motive. You knew at six, it was a first of its kind hearing here and a glimpse into what one day may be routine. Brandon Lee sentenced to prison on drug charges and taken into custody. It was all done remotely. Paul Venema following this one for us.
Brandon Lee, who was arrested this summer on drug charges, is here in the Bear County Probation Office. He's appearing via Zoom before Judge Catherine Torres Stahl. In this charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, no contest? Guilty. This is what the plea agreement, that document you see here showed to Lee on video, calls for. The sentence, too, outlined in that plea agreement. Punishment to be assessed at three years confinement in TDC, a $1,500 fine, no application for community supervision, or deferred in this case. From the probation office, it's just a matter of going across the street for Lee. The deputy there is going to take you into uh, custody and transport you to the Bear County Jail until you can be transferred. Judge, this hearing this morning in which someone was taken into custody, is that something that perhaps we're going to be seeing more of? It'll probably be something that we do continue. It does make some things a little bit more convenient. The key, she said, was coordination between the probation office, the sheriff's office, and her court. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. The family of Damien Daniels says he served two tours of duty in Afghanistan. His bouts with mental illness are why Bear County deputies were called last month to check on him. But that ended with him being fatally shot during a struggle with deputies. Jesse Degollado says Daniels was one of many other combat veterans still engaged in battle against their own mental illness. Each war has had its unique circumstances, yet many veterans can emerge emotionally scarred by combat or have trouble adjusting to civilian life. I dare say that the issues were quite common or similar. Dr. James Hoover, a clinical psychologist with the South Texas Veterans Regional Healthcare System says the level of mental illness it sees is quite high. Depression, anxiety, psychotic disorders. PTSD will see hypervigilance, exaggerated startle response, a danger lurking around every corner. Many of them driven into homelessness. Given that it's so interfering with one's ability to uh, maintain a livelihood. Often becoming addicted to drugs or alcohol as medication. Until finally the suicide rate among veterans is now one and a half times higher than civilians. It's not so much a desire to die as it is a desire to end the, end the suffering. Whatever they're going through, he says the Veterans Crisis Line hey. is there to help. Jesse DeGollado, KSAT 12 News. Uh, hey, come on. And we have information about the services that the VA has for veterans and their families right now on our website at KSAT.com. Time saver traffic. Let's go to the trans guide camera at 410 and Austin Highway and you can see the rain has certainly arrived there. I just love these pictures. It seems like it's been so long since it rained here. By the way, CPS Energy saying less than 1100 customers right now, a little less than 1100 customers right now are without power because of these storms and Adam showed you some of the lightning that's been associated with some of these as well. But the good thing is it's just mostly beneficial rain. New at 6, San Antonio International Airport, the first in the world to deploy a robot to take on the coronavirus. This is the Xenex Light Strike robot, which is touted as the only ultraviolet room disinfection technology proven to deactivate the virus that causes COVID-19. The robot puts out a brief burst of intense UV light that's supposed to kill the virus in common and hard to clean spaces. And it can do it fast, apparently, without a cool down or any warm up time, which airport officials say will make it easy to deploy throughout the airport without disrupting services. The airport never shuts down. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we have staff here that are utilizing it to take uh, appropriate steps to ensure that the facility is, is being sanitized. We're told there will be a citywide contest to name the light strike robot. Oh, huh. those are always interesting. It will be part of the social media effort to restore confidence in air travel and reduce the fear of becoming infected with COVID-19 while at the airport. I can already tell you one of the entries is going to be robot McRobot face. <laughs> Roby McRobot face. Yes. <laughs> oh, when are we starting our podcast? <laughs> Anyway, we have some important stuff to talk about out there yeah. right now. This is nice, isn't it? See those drops on the screen? Non-severe storms, just some heavy rainfall, embedded downpours over San Antonio. Now, right before the rain hit, we made it to 99 degrees. We had a lot of sunshine destabilize the atmosphere. Outflow boundary hit us, and then boom, the activity popping up over Bear County. We do have a severe thunderstorm that's west of town right now. I mentioned this, this is a severe thunderstorm warning. 
just southwest of Uvalde into northwestern Zavala County and northern Maverick County and also in Kinney County. Basically, this is just past south of Brackettville. Uh, that's for wind gusts potentially up to 60 miles per hour. And there's a lot of lightning associated with that pocket of this cluster. Then you get into Bear County and surrounding communities. You still have some light rain near Bernie, Kendall County, and in Bandera County, but it's starting to taper off and it's picking up now in other parts of San Antonio. So the north side of town has seen most of the rain so far, especially Helotus area, northwest side, Shavano Park, Leon Valley, but we're getting more development eastward along I-35, Live Oak, down toward Windcrest, and soon should be the Converse area. Even Lackland down toward Palo Alto College, that outflow boundary just moved through. Give it about 20, 25 minutes. Once you feel that cool breeze, Start the watch and you should get a shower to pop up within that 25 minute time frame. And even downtown, a little downpour or a little shower, I guess you could call it, just developed. So these scattered showers and storms through sunset thereafter will still have some lingering activity periodically through the night and even the first part of the day tomorrow. Temperatures falling down into the 70s. They're wide ranging right now ahead of the outflow and storms, 90s behind it in the 70s and even 69 in comfort. We'll see you in a few minutes. Ooh, who's our chief uh, medical director of Metro Health, as well as Dr. Brian Alsip, who is the chief medical officer for the University Health System. And this is the COVID-19 update for the San Antonio community. Before we get into tonight's numbers, we wanna talk with you a little bit about the upcoming Labor Day weekend. It's a holiday weekend with hopefully some cooler temperatures and it's tempting to get out, barbecue with, with family, and it would be tempting to let your guard down, but we do have to remember that lives are depending on us all to to stay disciplined. Although the number of cases have dropped, coronavirus is still present throughout our community. So we have to protect ourselves and our loved ones this Labor Day by wearing masks, keeping six feet of distance from others, and avoiding large crowds. Remember that after Memorial Day and the July 4th weekend, our region saw a significant spike in COVID-19 cases, and we came dangerously co close to overwhelming our hospital system. So please don't let your guard down now. Uh, we have to maintain vigilance as our public health officials have been telling us from the very start. Let me turn it over to Commissioner Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Much appreciated. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, you know, we, we have come very close to overwhelming our hospital systems, which is, I would argue, our number one goal that we've tried to make sure we, we don't overwhelm. And so as we go into this Labor Day weekend, you know, continue to be smart about this. Make sure that, that you're careful. Now, now it's more important than any other time to make sure we don't uh, make that spike that we've, we've seen happen before. So if you're going to do something over Labor Day, choose an outdoor location where you can avoid locations with poor ventilation. Skip the family style spread, individually packaged meals and utensils are safer. Wear a mask, especially around those who are more susceptible to virus. You've heard me say this before, where, you know, perhaps, you know, wearing mask and social distancing is, is a new form of our wearing seat belts and airbags so mask up like you like you buckle up if you're going to be doing stuff this this labor day weekend and let's protect each other and make sure we don't run into another spike mayor Great. thank you uh, commissioner uh, so on to the, today's numbers and we're continuing to see a, a good trend in the community that we want to maintain uh, we're reporting 157 new cases of COVID-19 which brings our total to 47,070 since this pandemic began in our community our seven-day moving average has dipped slightly to 180 Unfortunately, we do have a number of new deaths to report tonight, 16 in total, which brings our overall total to 851. 11 of these are the result of Metro Health reviewing, reviewing death certificates provided by the state and confirming that the deaths were COVID related. And these occurred between July 14th and yesterday. And as we always remind you, 851 uh, of these, uh, 851 deaths means that we have lost that many friends and neighbors, colleagues, loved ones, and so please keep their families in your prayers. Every death is a tragedy and a life lost in our community, and we mourn them uh, along with their family members. All right, and over into the hospitals now. Tonight there are 344 patients COVID positive in the hospital, down 12 from yesterday. 
24 new admissions to the hospitals over uh, within the last 24 hours, and I should note that that's the lowest number of admissions we've seen in quite some time. 155 patients in ICU and 87 on ventilators. In terms of capacity, we have 65 percent of uh, ventilators available and 13 percent of staffed hospital beds available. San Antonio, we are counting on you to stop the spread of COVID-19. Please be safe this Labor Day weekend. And as always, you can get updates on COVID-19 as well as all the relief programs that are available for those affected, uh, relief programs established by the city and the county. And you can get those at covid19.sanantonio.gov. Obviously, Labor Day, a big concern for the mayor and county commissioner, Kevin Wolf, that you heard there. Lives are depending on us all. What the mayor said, be smart this Labor Day. What Commissioner Wolf had to say when talking about COVID and Labor Day. He hearkened back to Memorial Day. They talked about the spike we saw after that big weekend when a lot of people got together. Uh, just a, a reminder about how to make plans this weekend. As for the new numbers, 157 new cases reported over the last 24 hours. We've seen that number really kind of be all over the place from 40 to a high of 250 so far this week. Uh, but all in all, the mayor says all these indicators are trending, continuing in the right direction. 16 new deaths, but the majority of those uh, happen between July 14th and now and then 24 new admissions to the hospital. He made note of that being the lowest number in 24 hours yep. in quite some time. Yeah. Meanwhile, it is raining downtown. I'm told here at the KSAT studios, which makes me very happy. I didn't wash my car. <laughs> it's a natural wash. Yeah. My Always favorite nice kind, <laughs> the best kind. All right, so we do have some activity on the radar screen. It's nice to see this, and we still have more chances through the night and into tomorrow as well. I want to focus here west of town and especially just south of Highway 90, south of Brackettville, west of Uvalde, moving into Maverick and Zavala counties. That's where we have a severe thunderstorm warning until 645 p.m. As that storm there, which is very electrified, that could have some wind gusts embedded within it of 60 miles per hour. So that's the concern there. Locally, we don't have anything severe. We just have some heavy rainfall that has popped up. I know not everybody's getting it. Some of you at home are frustrated right now because maybe you just got a few drops and that's it. Other folks, Really doing well and cashing in with this rainfall, especially in Bandera County, Kendall County and parts of Kamal counties. That's where we've had the most persistent rainfall. We get right into downtown and just east of downtown along 410 and we and that's south of south of I-10 and we have this heavy rain indicated by the orange and the red there. That's some good soaking rain for the lawns and gardens. If you're on the roadways may not be so good, but we're happy to see the heavy rainfall. You get to the northeast side of town. At Live Oak, you have some light rain. That's about it. But you go west on 1604 and right where it's about through Bulverde Road and Redland Road. That's some heavy rainfall indicated by the red colors on the radar screen. And still just northeast of Leon Valley now towards Chavano Park. Some of the heaviest rainfall there and that's in the medical center area. Here's the bigger picture. And notice on the south side of town near Palo Alto College and Mitchell Lake, that's where we have some heavy rainfall that just developed right now with the outflow boundary. Rainfall has been pretty good for some folks. You look at the yellows and that indicates over two inches of rainfall. So Bandera County, Kendall, Kamal and parts of Kerr counties uh, did get over two inches according to radar estimates. Then we zoom into the medical center area and about one and a half to one and three quarters of an inch of rain. So that's nice to see. But of course, rain isn't exactly equal and it doesn't like to spread itself out to everybody. So some folks getting a trace, other folks getting nearly two inches. The scattered activity is going to be lasting for a few more hours, then just a few isolated lingering showers here and there tonight. Some widely separated activity for the first part of the day tomorrow as well, and consequently probably a bit cooler in the low 90s and still another shot <clears throat> on Saturday. All right, thanks, Adam. All right, COVID troubles at Texas State. Larry has sports up next. We got to play four quarters, and we can't, you know, we got to be able to switch and stop the momentum from, from a great team. That's Deshaun Watson talking about what he learned after watching Casey come back from 24 points to beat the Texans in the playoffs in big board sports. 
We are 10 days away from the Dallas Cowboys first game of the season at the Los Angeles Rams and one of the hot topics continues to be will the boys stand or take a knee during the national anthem and will they do so as a team or individually from wide receiver number one Amari Cooper to QB one Dak Prescott opinions on that topic differ today defensive lineman Tyrone Crawford said the boys are planning to make a statement. We definitely you know have uh, you know the the green light on all that. <laughs> but, you know, also um, just trying to, you know, find something that's going to make a boom. You know, it's not just going to be something that people look at one time and, you know, kind of just swipe by it. You know, they're like, oh, that's great. You know, the Cowboys did that and then swipe by it. I think <clears throat> we want to do something that makes a boom and, you know, that's something that people remembers and it actually creates some change. We will see what happens Sunday, September 13th at 7.20 p.m. when the Rams host the Cowboys at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. It is about to get real for the Houston Texans who will kick off the 2020 NFL season one week from tonight at the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, the 101st season of NFL action. The Texans held their final interest squad scrimmage last night, doing so under the lights to better prepare them for that night game on the road. The Texans got in some good work, they say, had some fun, and they walked away healthy, says Deshaun Watson. Went well, you know, we're getting uh, <clears throat> the details, you know, um, finished up on, on exactly, you know, of training camp and, and things like that. And, you know, the beauty of it, we everyone came out healthy. So, uh, you know, we all came out healthy and the scrimmage was well. Got some, you know, good competitive plays and, you know, in a, in a setting where we got to get used to, um, especially for our home game. So it was nice to be able to get on the field and just kind of, you know, let it loose. KC will host Houston next Thursday night at 720. The Chiefs will allow about 16,000 fans to attend the game at Arrowhead Stadium. Turning to college football, four Texas State football players are in quarantine following contact tracing and will miss the Bobcat season opener with SMU as reported by the Austin American Statesman. Those players are quarterback Tyler Vitt from MacArthur High School, DB Torrey Spears, and tight ends Seth Kayouette and Jackson Lanham. As for the game itself, Memphis transfer Brady McBride will start a quarterback for the Bobcats. He won the job by beating out Vitt. Head coach Jake Spavadol feels great about handing the ball over to McBride. He's had an exceptional fall camp, you know. Um, I, I think he's he's came in, he's been pretty driven. Um, you know, he's a coach's kid too, so it, a lot of this stuff is familiar with him, you know, to him. And uh, I, I think that he has a unique skill set in terms of being able to extend plays. Um, it's going to be an exciting brand of ball with him. You know, I, I'm going to have to be smart with the play calls to just understand where he's at and try to contain him a little bit and, and try to get him some uh, efficient plays because he's naturally going to go and try to make plays with his feet. McBride is a sophomore and sat out last season due to NCAA transfer bylaws. Texas State is scheduled to host SMU Saturday, 3.30 p.m. at Bobcat Stadium. I guess we're just going to have to get used to those kind of bulletins. I think so. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. You got it. Our KSAT Q&A is up next. In today's KSAT Q&A, we are joined by infectious disease doctor, Dr. Ruth Berggren with the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. As always, doctor, thanks for being with us. Nice to see you. Uh, let's start with vaccines. That is a big topic right now. A lot of questions surrounding the development of that vaccine and when. We heard yesterday the CDC tell states be ready to distribute November 1st. What's your take on that? Well, that's a really excellent question and I thank you for it. I, I want to point out to people that there, you know, there's been a, over 100 vaccines in development. We have a number of them in clinical trials, I think 29 to 30 of them in clinical trials, and uh, two actively enrolling in San Antonio with a third one on the way. Um, if you consider this, that even those that were out front were here in the U.S. were enrolling in August, um, let's say we have great data about their safety and their ability to generate antibody responses. There is no way that you have long-term knowledge about their efficacy, I mean, how protective they are uh, by November, right? I mean, August to November is a pretty short period of time. So this is obviously a pandemic. It's an emergency. Things are being done differently. But the truth of the matter is that what's going to happen in early November, if we're if you're vaccinating people, is we're going to be vaccinating early on 
um, before we have long-term safety and efficacy data. Is it as important as perhaps it has ever been to get your flu vaccine, since we're talking about vaccines? That is so important. And the reasons are many. Um, flu kills a lot of people in the United States every year. It looks right now like COVID is killing about twice as many people as the flu is, but there's still a lot of people who get it could get immunized. We only immunize half the people we're, we should be immunizing every year. So, so we need to get on it. Now, picture this. Imagine you're one of the folks that's at higher risk for a bad outcome from COVID or flu. You're over the age of 64. You may have one or two chronic illnesses that set you up for a bad outcome. Now, imagine that you not only get COVID, you get flu at the same time. This could happen. You know, you are really at risk for a bad outcome now. So we call this a the possibility of a twindemic. We do not want to see a twindemic in San Antonio. And the way to avoid it is to have everybody, but everybody who can go get their flu shot. It's available right now. So you can get on it right away. Let's talk about Labor Day, it, the holiday weekend, just a few days away. I know that we have talked and talked about the warnings, telling people to take precautions. Uh, but you know what? A lot of 2020 has felt like a broken record. So I think that we should touch on that again. And you said something uh, that I found really interesting last time we brought this up. Identify your Labor Day social bubble. So what strategy should people have for whatever plan they're making this weekend? Right. So you, you want to just really uh, only socialize with um, your immediate family and maybe a couple others who are also being similarly cautious. The more people that you bring in, the more you are exposing yourself to whoever those people have been exposed to. So really be thoughtful about it. And this is not the time to start expanding your social bubble. This is the time to keep it right where it's been. And we want to um, have people think about minimizing the time that they spend indoors with that social bubble. If you're going to do something um, in the backyard, such as a barbecue, keep it outdoors, keep it small and wear your masks if you're going to be indoors or if you're going to be anywhere near people that are vulnerable that have That's what we have to do during these pandemic times. In addition to the return of in-person learning, another big event we're all looking ahead to is the election coming up in the fall. We've talked with you about that before as well. We know now that Bear County is going to be sending mail-in ballots to all voters over the age of 65. Uh, you've talked about some changes you would like to see in order to prevent the spread uh, when it comes to elections. Is that a step in the right direction? Yes, I, I really do encourage anybody over the age of 64, people with uh, disabilities 
and uh, immunocompromising conditions to go ahead and use that mail-in ballot option. Don't forget, you can take the mail-in ballot down to the election office yourself and deliver it in person if you want to, right up until election day, but don't wait and do it early. Um, Let's minimize people being in crowds together. Other things, of course, are being prepared. tool for us. It can be helpful, um, but it needs to be used properly. So think about that and think about the need to wear a mask um, to protect those other people that are around you, the other people in our community that are part of our democracy that also need to come and vote and they need to vote safely. And we need to protect the health of the election judges who are exposed to all of us as we SpaceX staying busy launching even more satellites into orbit. The Falcon 9 rocket successfully lifted off from Florida's Kennedy Space Center this morning. On board 60 Starlink satellites. They'll be added to the hundreds already in orbit, which will eventually be used to provide high speed internet across the globe. Adam Kasky has an update on your forecast and that rain out there up next. It is a welcome sight. Those temperatures, not bad either. Some rain out there, Adam. Yeah, it sure is nice to see the rain on the radar screen. It's a good daily double. Daily double, I like it. There you go, yeah. There you go. Good one. Ding, ding, ding. We got it. And uh, the...
Rain moved into town, really dropped temperatures significantly, and of course is dropping some rain. I was checking our KSAC Connect app, and Holotus, for example, three quarters of an, of an inch measured in a rain gauge there. And we have some parts of town that have had over an inch. And medical center area radar estimates are on the order of about 1.7 inches. So let's get right to it with a look at the radar. And we have the activity out there. That's a static image of it, but we also have some severe weather off to the west. So we'll get to our local activity again in a moment. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Maverick County there, and that goes until 715 PM. Primary threat, including the Eagle Pass area, primary threat wind gusts up to about 60 miles per hour, and there could be some non severe, uh, non damaging hail associated with that. So Wind the primary threat there closer to the Rio Grande. You look locally over the past couple of hours and this was really fired up in the hill country as it was pushing southward. Outflow got ahead of it. Outflow boundary kicking off the showers and thunderstorms in and around San Antonio. Of course, not every neighborhood's getting it. So some folks are pretty frustrated, but others really cashing in nicely. Elmendorf, it's it basically in closing in on you as we speak that Gust front and outflow, I should say, just moved through, and that's helping to kickstart these showers, which are moving into town right now. Bronning Lake and soon to be Calaveras Lake. Look at the Kirby area and just south of Kirby along I-10, East Houston Street, east of downtown here along 410 and Foster Road. This is some heavy rainfall, a little bit of lightning associated with it. These little white lines indicate the lightning strikes, but there isn't really a whole lot of lightning associated with it right now. It's not as electrified as it was earlier as it was moving closer to town. And even Shirts Randolph Air Force Base area now getting some heavy rainfall. You look at the rainfall totals, Bandera County, Kerr County, Kendall County, Kamal County, some pockets of high accumulations in and around Bandera over two inches estimated. Even in parts of San Antonio, Leon Valley area, 1.8 inches, same story medical center there. So we have seen some good downpours associated with this that have dropped some nice accumulating rain, but not for everybody. That's the nature of the rain and even west of town over an inch and uh, some parts of the heavier downpour. So there's a last look at that rain as we have it. Most of it now steady at least, which is nice to see that steady rain in Bandera County, but this is all kind of curling around and starting to wrap its way eastward. So as it dissipates, I anticipate that to start swinging its way through. So if you haven't gotten the rain yet, there's still some hope for you. OK, look at the temperatures 4 p.m. 99 outflow hits. Boom. 83, 82, 80, and now we're down to 73. Just like that. 99 degrees at 4 p.m., and then boom, we're down in the 70s. That's the nature of these outflow boundaries and, of course, the rain cool air that, uh, that, that we have out there. So we're feeling the cooler air, at least here in San Antonio, but not south of town where we've had some sun and no storms yet. We still have temperatures in the 90s. Tomorrow, We'll start the day with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Even through the night, we'll have some pockets of rain. It's going to be widely separated in nature, but still nonetheless, at least a shot. 92 by the afternoon, so not quite as hot. The little extra cloud cover to start the day should be helping us out. Saturday, still that chance of some isolated pop up showers and storms, 94. Then Sunday and Labor Day, mid 90s and sunny. Next week, I know there have been the rumors of a cold front. I'm losing confidence even more in that happening. It's still a possibility, but not a probability. I see some 80s in there. Yeah, a little shift in our weather pattern, but right now I'd give it about a 30 to 40% chance of that cold front actually moving through. Okay. All right. Sometimes that 30% chance proves true. Sometimes it does. Okay, it's been a very active day today, so I don't have a lot for you here with uh, Thermometer Thursday, but I do want to point out Rick. Rick Pape of San Antonio, the winner of this week's homemade thermometer. And I had this queued up too. Ah, uh, my allergists looking good. The squad. Ah, yeah, they're yeah. looking good. Dr. Estrada's at office. Andy, we're right side up next time. <laughs> <laughs> they always give me a good itch and help me out, you know, well, yeah. my allergy shots. It's nice. Good. So it's nice to see them all uh, decked out on a therm thurs. There you go. Thanks, Got to mark the moment. Of course. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. <laughs>
And this year, Labor Day, more than just a holiday, it also is the day that marks the end of virtual learning for a lot of San Antonio students. It will be back to school for some on Tuesday, but in a whole new way. In the cafeteria lines, in the front office, um, the use of plexiglass dividers. Both Northside and Northeast ISD are districts bringing back some of the students who want to return to campus. But next steps are still somewhat up in the air. Any ISD has a soft target to bring in most of the other students who want to return in another two weeks. Well, NISD is waiting to see what happens with local conditions before it announces a date for its next step. Police are looking for the people involved in a drive-by shooting. They say a woman and a few others were sitting outside on the porch, and that's when they say a tan Buick pulled up and someone inside fired a few shots and the car sped off. Police say a bullet hit a woman in the stomach and she was taken to FAMSI. She is expected to recover and officers are still looking for the shooter. Well, the annual peanut festival in Floresville has been postponed till March. That means organizers will host two festivals next year, including the one in October. While the festival is canceled for next month, the peanut festival board of directors says they still plan to hold a private coronation and a mini parade that will be by invitation only. Man's best friend getting his own beer. It's called Dog Brew by Bush, the non-alcoholic bone broth made from bone in pork butt, celery, mint, turmeric, and ginger. You can pour it into a water bowl or use it to soften Fido's food. Uh, Bush said it will donate a dollar for every four pack to the Best Friends Animal Society. Got a traffic alert to make you aware of here. I-35 at Burbank, you can see it looks like a box truck has overturned there in the median between the access road uh, or the road there and then the ramp to get on to 35. Roads haven't been wet in quite some time, so certainly they tend to be a lot more slick out there after it's been a while since we have seen some rain. So drivers definitely having to take precautions in this area. Yeah, it could take a while to get this one cleaned up. Meanwhile, the rains continue to fall and we want to make sure people know that according to CPS Energy's map right now, between 2,800 and 2,900 customers are without power again. Something else that happens when we get rain. We haven't had it for a while. Adam. Yeah, and the newest drought monitor is out. Of course, we need some rainfall, especially in and around South Texas. You look at the radar throughout the afternoon up to the current time, and it's nice to see some rain falling on areas that really, really need it. Right now, mainly just steady rain, Bandera, Medina, and Kendall counties, and that's starting to work its way into northwestern Bear County. So that's good to see. So some scattered showers still here through the evening, some lingering pop ups through the night, and then the first part of the day tomorrow we'll still have some widely separated showers. Gotta get out of this studio so we can feel those temperatures. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you on the next.